William Hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. minute or two late, uh, but uh, the uh, Park and Recreation Board is now in session, and uh, I'm sorry that we've run out of chairs, uh, uh, I, I know, and I know there's some people in the flag room, uh, so uh, may, maybe over time we can, we can uh, change out or let them have a chance to be in here also. But in any case, uh, uh, there's only one uh, topic today, and, and that is Fair Park. And, and, and how to proceed. And um, we have a number of speakers, and I thought first I would do if, if someone wants to come up and just say their name and what they, you know, like a five or six words, what they're for on it. If they want to do that, we'll make them first, and then we'll go into the regular speakers. And uh, depending on the, uh, I don't have a final count yet, but depending on the number, We'll, eat, we'll, but the odds are we'll probably give two minutes apiece for everybody. Um, having said that, uh, we will start the speakers now. And if I mispronounce your name, uh, I apologize. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Oh. I didn't formally convene the meeting, so I guess I need to formally convene the meeting. And that, with that done, we will talk, start with our public speakers. If, if I do mispronounce your name, uh, please let me know, and, and I apologize in advance. Some people write better than others, I think, and, and uh, um, I'll have my glasses on in a minute. Mr. President? Yes, sir. Uh, may I? It's a... Uh, well, the only, uh, Rob, the only thing I know we're going to take up separately are the minutes. Uh, the rest of the, this session is dedicated to the Fair Park issue. And uh, uh, yeah. counsel, uh, if, he, if he's recusing himself, does he need to be excused during the speakers also? Yes, he does. He's related to the, the matter, yes. All right, so you would have to leave now. Our first speaker is uh, Kevin Felder. Yes, sir. Will you come? Well, no, I take it. Excuse me. Well, let's go with the one minute, or not one minute, but the people who would like to come up and just say what they're for or against, and 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 not spend even uh, 15 seconds. Is there anyone that wants to do that to go first? I guess not. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> Kellen Felder is, not, is the first speaker, and you have two minutes. Good morning. And, and let's, uh, how's the clock working? Uh, uh, are these clocks working? Uh, my time is ticking okay, while you're it. talking. Can they re roll All it right. back, please? And, and please don't run past it, because this is going I, to be a long day. Again, it's, it's running, and I haven't started. I understand, sir. Good morning. My name is Kevin Felder, and I'm the political action chair for the Dallas branch of the NAACP. 
I would like to go on record in opposition to the proposed management agreement as it is written. It is full of issues. First of all, why was Walt Human selected to lead this effort? He may be a nice man and have a great resume. However, he has no experience in park management. He should resign. It is my understanding that one of your members, Rob Stewart, who just left, is a partner in the law firm of Lock Lord that wrote the agreement. That is a conflict of interest. He should resign. What is the community plan? What's in it for the community? The immediate community needs to be protected and benefit from this agreement with affordable housing, home repair, and decent jobs that a family can live off of. What is the protection plan for the African American Museum? That is a sacred cultural institution for the black community that must be protected in this plan. Where is the fair share agreement for blacks and other minority contractors? A 35% fair share agreement must be included in this agreement. That would include executive level positions and contracting opportunities, which include prime contracting. Best practices calls for an RFP to be created and bid solicited from the best and most qualified vendors. Not to the one that is most politically connected to the mayor, the way that it is currently. This would be the most lucrative $600 million no bid contract in America. As representatives of the Dallas taxpayers, you owe a fiduciary duty to those taxpayers and not to the mayor and his business friends and not to the city council either. Do the right thing, hold the community meetings, conduct, hold more community meetings, conduct more research, and do your due diligence. Your time is expired, sir. Vote. Sir, your time. Would you wait a second? I forgot to ask you something. I'm sorry. Uh, you didn't list your home address, and, and I want each speaker, if they'd be kind enough. 8404 Capriola Lane. Uh, Diane Ragsdale. And by the way, a former council member. Welcome. Good morning to each of you. Yes, my name is Diane Ragsdale. Uh, to the chair and to park board members, and uh, as a member of the mayor's task force on Fair Park, uh, as a lifelong resident of South Dallas Fair Park, and as a nonprofit uh, director of a community-based development corporation in Mill City, which is one of the neighborhoods of Fair Park, I come to you in support of the nonprofit foundation. Why is that? Because I strongly believe that it helps to, to centralize the management similar to the zoo and the arboretum, both of which are very successful. I also support the foundation because it will help significantly to raise private monies and particular foundation monies. I always recognize that the details had to be worked out by the Park Board and the Dallas City Council. On page 14 of the report, it speaks to the expansion of Fair Park into the residential area. Any expansion of the Fair Park should not take place without a SUP, which is a Pacific Use Permit. Any entity within Fair Park should require a Pacific Use Permit, and that means parking and otherwise. Any given, in, when I mean entity, I'm talking about any given institution within Fair Park, it should require in SUP in order to ensure that the community, the City Plan Commission, and the Dallas City Council would all be informed and also would be a part of the decision makers. Lastly, I want to say that bond proceeds, once you begin to invest the bond proceeds into Farrell Park, if that's what you're going to do, you must strongly encourage or include in the contract that Bond proceeds should also be a, should also be included in the uh, uh, for the adjacent neighborhoods like Mill City, for uh, arts and culture, for business development, for mental health programs, for infrastructure, for housing. That that not only should bond proceeds. Oh, I'm so sorry. Not only should bond proceeds be included for Fair Park, but also for the for the adjacent neighborhoods. That also can be included in the contract. Thank you so very kind. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Rich and, Rich, and I forgot again uh, to ask for your address. Uh, oh, uh, no, no, I. Uh, yeah, no, it's 3611 Dunbar Street, Paul Lawrence Dunbar Street, located within Phyllis Wheatley uh, neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> 
Oh, let's not start that. I hope we won't applaud, and because we really need to move through these. Mr. Sheridan. Yes, good morning, uh, Rich Sheridan, 3817 Vinette Lane. That's Carol and Arnold's district. WFAA News did a great segment on the nefarious activities of the park board. It looks like all is not wells at the park board. Seems like corruption is nearing the max. There's way too many behind doors meetings. Is the mayor's mayor and his cronies trying to steal Fair Park? Where's the transparency? It seems like there's little or no transparency. If we really want to make Fair Park a success, like New York Central Park, then we must do two things. And by the way, I am a licensed professional engineer in New York City. I grew up in New York City, and I know quite a bit about Central Park. Ever since the late 40s, I've been going into Central Park. So to make Central Park, to make Fair Park like Central Park, which is great success, number one, bring in some of the managers of Central Park to find out how they made Central Park such a great success. Central Park has about 40 million visitors a year. Central Park is the most successful urban park in the nation. And Central Park, which is almost three times the size of Fair Park, brings in about $100 million a year to New York City. Some vendors pay twenty, excuse me, $200,000 a year as a fee to be allowed to sell their hot dogs and food. Quoting former mayor candidate Marcos Ronquillo, we must have a world-class management team not connected to Dallas politics, one that is totally transparent. Developing Fair Park to become a 365-day-a-year entertainment destination will result in the value of the surrounding properties to significantly increase. Therefore, we must make sure that the existing property owners are fairly treated and that gentrification does not occur. Gentrification of poverty-stricken communities, the theft of the poor people's land, as well as the theft of Fair Park, are part of Rawlins, I believe, and the rich white men of Dallas's agenda. We were recently warned about this by Reverend Peter Johnson. God bless Peter Johnson. We must deny the vote today. Delay the vote today, excuse me. Delay the vote today, and let's do some more due diligence, and let's do the best practices, and find out what's going on with other successful park in our nation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, before you leave, uh, Mr. Sharon, what's your address? I failed to ask, him, and your address is 3817, 3817 Vinette Lane. And right. I have a very good watchdog outside in case anybody might want to come <laughs> and approach me. Okay. Alan Wan. And... And Mr. Wan is a, a, a former council member. Welcome. Uh, Alan, <clears throat> excuse me, Alan Wan, 1002 Caribou Trail, Dallas, Texas. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning, and thank you all for your service to the city of Dallas and the sacrifices that you make. Uh, it's, it's something that I feel very strongly about that you guys do a, a fantastic job of giving up your time. Uh, short and sweet, you know, the mayor almost three years ago uh, had called, asked if I'd serve on the chairman's task force for Fair Park. Um, the conclusion of that, to wrap it up, was really the fact that the governance of Fair Park needed to change and a public-private partnership needed to be formed. Little did I know at that time that we would end up with someone of the caliber of Walt Human to lead that. If you came down here on DART today, you came down on DART because of Walt Human. If you came down on Central Expressway today, as I did, you came down here because of Walt Human. Those are the kind of things that Walt Human got done when nobody else could get it done. Walt Human is a get it done kind of guy. Uh, I feel very strongly that uh, this will be a very successful uh, private, a public private partnership, much like the Dallas Zoo, the Arboretum, Clyde Warren Park that we find in our cities. So I ask that you listen diligently, you get your questions answered, and you move forward, uh, vote favorably, and send this on to the city council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Joe McGee, is that correct? Yes. Hello, Joe McGee, 621 Ricky Canyon. In Dallas or? DeSoto. DeSoto, okay. And put, thank, thank you. you. All right. I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. I've seen Fair Park go through the highs and the lows. Just recently learned of the history of Fair Park. I am very excited and humbled to be here as I have been trying to make an offer and do due diligence to speak to someone. 
and make an offer, the only one that I know of that's bringing money to the table. And I'm bringing $350 million to redo Fair Park. So, I don't believe the city should have to pay to redo Fair Park. Now, I've spoke to Walt. I extended it. Want to work with him. I also want to work with Jay. All I care about is the love and making Fair Park green. Now I have the opportunity to do that, but I can only do that with the approval. I have no other means or reasons. I don't care about the power, board keep his power, or you can give it to Walt, whoever. But 350 million is a reason to delay the vote today. 250 to Fair Park and a hundred to each and every one of you all to your parks and recreation, to green them as well. Long as it makes financial sense, we're ready to do the deal. Plain and simple, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Craig Holcomb. There he is. Mr. Holcomb's a former council member. Welcome. I am Craig Holcomb. I live at 3601 Turtle Creek, apartment 901. I am president of Friends of Fair Park. Yesterday, I went through my calendar for the past year or so and have been to 14 public meetings on this subject everywhere from southeast Dallas to far north Dallas in the past year. I think all your questions need to be answered. But I sincerely hope that you vote one way or the other today. Uh, I've told everybody to be prepared to sit here till five or six o'clock tonight, but we do need a decision. It is time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Norman Aston. It's a Norman Alston, Mr. Chair. Thank Excuse you. Excuse me. Uh, no problem at all. I live at 506 Monta Vista in Dallas, just a little ways down Perry Avenue from Fair Park, and I am not a former member of the City Council of Dallas. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll, I'll be short and sweet also this morning. Uh, we're longtime supporters of the, uh, of the uh, St Fair Park and the State Fair. We think it's an incredible treasure for Dallas and for North Texas. Uh, my particular interest is in historic buildings, and you have to go a long way to find a better collection of important historic buildings. I'm, I'm fond of saying that, you know, we all appreciate the Alamo. Well, the Fair Park is our Alamo, and we need, it takes a special kind of care to uh, take care of it and to move it forward in a proper way. Uh, I'm here to encourage you to vote in favor of the agreement uh, before you, because I have looked at it in some detail and believe it to be the best path forward for Fair Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David Presse, Presse Ori. I'm close. Help me. <laughs> you got it. Preziosi. Okay, thank you. I'm David Preziosi representing uh, Preservation Dallas. My address is 2229 Lawndale Drive. Um, like, uh, I've been to many of these public meetings. You've seen me. I've been up here speaking uh, in favor of this proposal. You know, unfortunately, there's no silver bullet to fix Fair Park, one of Dallas's most important historic treasures and a national historic landmark. It'll take dedication, sacrifice, and most importantly, resources to do that. We believe that Walt Human and the Foundation Board have the ability to take on that task. Uh, we hope that you will work out any remaining uh, items or questions you have for Walt today on the management agreement, and that you can move forward and vote uh, today. Uh, Fair Park needs a brighter future, and we believe this is the path forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joan Wong. And Ms. Wong is, is a former president of this board. And Thank you, Mr. Currently Wells. Currently the chair of the at Dallas Zoo. Thank you, Mr. Wells. I right appreciate title? it. That's right. All right. Um, 
Good morning, Mr. Wells and members of the Park Board. I'm happy to see you all here today. I had the pleasure as Mr. Do you Mr. have Wells. the same address? Oh, yes, I have the same address. Excuse me, 10020 Caribou Trail, Dallas, Texas. Thank you. I had the pleasure, as Mr. Wells said, of serving on the Dallas Park Board with many of you and enjoyed working with you. And you, as well as I, know the importance of Fair Park. You have devoted countless hours to studying this issue, and I applaud your scrutiny. I share your concerns. I've walked in your shoes. I understand what it's like to make a change in governance. But I know wholeheartedly that this is the right path for Fair Park. I applaud this uh, partnership that's being proposed. It is a public-private partnership, and there are successful models for this all over the country and very successful models for this in our own city. So as you um, get your questions answered today, and um, I applaud your, your deliberation and I applaud your steadfastness, steadfastness in getting this done, but I know you know that Fair Park is worthy of this investment and worthy of this time, and this is a great path to make it the wonderful opportunity ahead of us that is presented itself. And thank you so much for your service and your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is it Michael King? No, that must not be. Uh, uh, what do you think of it? Looks like Mr. King is not here, obviously. If he comes back later, we'll run him in there. Uh, Virginia McAllister. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, honorable members of the Dallas City Park Board. I'm Virginia McAllister at 5703 Swiss Avenue. In 1982, I founded Friends of Fair Park as the park board was for the first time in about 100 years taking over the year-round operation of Fair Park. And the plan that they commissioned to do this called for tearing down a couple of the historic buildings and building a new parking lot in the middle of the park so it could be closer to the Cotton Bowl. We fought that. We got bond plans. We got the Esplanade partially restored in time for the Texas Sesquicentennial. In 1990, Mayor Annette Strauss asked me to chair a development plan for Fair Park that Stan Eckstead and Charles Moore did. One of that plan's highest recommendations, a group such as this was necessary in order for the park to be successful. We had public-private meetings for a year and at the end of a year, no one could, <laughs> there was no agreement, and it blew up, nothing happened. In 2003, Hargraves was hired to do a study. One of their, high, their highest recommendations was a group, a nonprofit group, that would work on the park, oversee it, give up unified management. Nothing happened with that. Now we actually have a chance with Walt Human that I have watched fight to bring the IMAX theater to Fair Park, fight to bring the site and keep the science place here, work on Jubilee Park, not to mention his other city projects. For the last year, I've watched him worrying day in and day out whenever I saw him about the buildings, about the uses, about the park, about the neighborhoods. I beg you to adopt this today. Robert Rhodes. Good morning. My name is Robert Rhodes. I live at 6905 Ellsworth in the uh, city of Dallas. Don't worry that is. Thank you very much. I am a volunteer at Paul Dunbar Elementary which is within two blocks of the uh, Fair Park. So I am vested and very interested in the redevelopment of that entire area. I'm in charge of the backpack food program for Paul Dunbar Elementary, which provides food for the children there on weekends when they're not fed at the school. So I'm urging you and hoping that you vote for Mr. Human's plan 
and for the redevelopment of, of the park in order to provide better housing, better everything for the students at the school where I work and the other areas surrounding the park there and the park, the buildings there. I urge you very much to vote for Mr. Human's plan. I have read it. I've studied it. I think it's the best plan, and I think he is the best man to lead it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bobby Ahati. Good morning, Mr. President. Bobby Abtahi, 1210 North Clinton Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75208. Uh, that's in District 1. Uh, I'm here representing the Friends of Fair Park. I'm chairman of the board of the Friends of Fair Park, and my board wanted to convey to you many things. Uh, most of which are in a letter that you should have received uh, earlier in the week. So I won't take the time to go through all of that in detail, but they did want me to convey that we thank you all for your time and your energy that you've put into this. This has been many years that we've talked about fixing Fair Park, and I don't think anyone here uh, disagrees that there is something that needs to be done. Now, we may disagree on what needs to be done, but the fact that we're here talking about it is a huge step. The Friends of Fair Park fully supports this plan. It's essentially a, adopts many of the uh, facets of the 2007 comprehensive plan. And that was a plan that many folks said, like most plans at City Hall, just sit on the shelf and gather dust. So it's an exciting time to be here because finally we have a plan that has had energy and effort and due diligence put into it. And rather than letting it sit on a shelf and gather dust, we're here to do something about it. We're here to put action to words. So I thank Mr. Human. I thank all the folks who are in opposition to this plan. I thank all the folks that are here today. And the Friends of Fair Park ask that you pass this plan, you move it forward, and be one of the first governmental bodies in the city to take a plan and put it into action. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Robert Rhodes. He just spoke. Oh, he just spoke. Yeah, okay, excuse me. Uh, Harriet Earhart. Is Harriet here this morning? There she is. Welcome, uh, uh, Ms. Earhart is a former... Uh, uh, a former everything. No, 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 no. Well, that too, but a, a former representative in the State House. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Harriet Earhart, and I live at 5731 Swiss Avenue. First, let me begin by thanking you for your service. I went to the 1936 State Fair. Now, I was young then, but I did go, and I have been a supporter of our fair ever since. I know and love our park. I'm urging you not to hold it against us that some of us who are supportive may be among your older citizens. Some of us who are older are still capable of, of, of uh, being open, capable of thinking new and inclusive ideas. And to that, I would like to speak to the foundation chair, Walt Human. I know him, and I urge you to consider what he has done rather than what some people say he might do or not do. If you know how Jubilee Park was created, how inclusive that whole operation was, how he involved the community, how he respected the various cultural opportunities that were there, then you know that this is the man to do what we need to do to, to save our beautiful Fair Park. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm not sure of the pronunciation. Is it Kaya Graves? Kayla. Kayla? Ms. Graves? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, my name is Kayla Graves. I live at 2012 Blue Ridge in Cedar Hill, Texas. Um, I'm a student at SMU currently. Um, I'm actually studying Fair Park. And I just wanted to speak today. Um, I do support the plan. Obviously, that um, there are some problems 
with it that I don't want to go into because there's not a lot of time. Um, but I do think that this is the best plan moving forward for the park. Um, I've studied a lot of private-public partnerships um, over the last two years, and I do think that this is a best plan moving forward. Um, Fair Park it has a potential to be a wonderful city asset, um, and I think the success of a lot of other ventures that the city has done, such as Clyde Warren, um, point to Fair Park becoming uh, a, another city asset. Um, East Dallas has a very rich history, and I think we need to respect that and um, include them in the process. Um, and yeah, <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Jacqueline is, is spinal. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. It's Jacqueline Espinal, 1200 Main Street, Dallas 75202. I'm here today in opposition to passing this plan as it stands right now. The reasons why are because it lacks transparency, accountability, or an equitable treatment for the citizens of Dallas. In particular, I'm opposed to the more than $600 million that this plan proposes for taxpayers when we have unfunded liabilities for police officers, we have unfunded liabilities for city employees, and we have more than a billion dollars of deferred maintenance for the city. Why the rush? Why can't we take our time and look at best practices. This contract is very one-sided. It looks completely in favor of the Fair Park Texas Foundation without offering the city any out. As a taxpayer in Dallas, I completely oppose this plan. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Erika Cole, Ms. Cole. Oh, hello, welcome. Hi, my name is Erica Cole. I live at 9246 Forest Hills Boulevard. Um, I was born and raised in Dallas. I'm a taxpayer. I've been to many of these meetings and leading up to this one. This discussion should be open to Dallas citizens and city council chambers. Open it up so we can all be a part of it, um, where the par park board members can ask any questions. Paul Sims or whoever wants to speak up and ask questions will get, be given all the time there is. We have in Dallas in my lifetime made some horrible long-term decisions which has cost the uh, city a lot of money. I don't know if uh, Walt Human's plan is the best plan, but I know there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of holes in the, uh, the, uh, his plan. Um, I'm impressed with so many of the uh, park board members and I know that most of them uh, want to be involved and I think we should show them the respect that uh, we give them all the time that they need. Um, I want Dallas to be an exciting progressive uh, city. I want us to be open. I want us to be fair. I want us to be transparent. And it's a new. Da I see this as a new turning point in Dallas, and I don't think this necessarily. Uh, this has been the best way to do it. Um, let's open fair the fate of Fair Park to uh, our park members. Why rush the process? Why do that? And. Um, Arboretum in my neighborhood, in our neighborhood in East Dallas, has been a, pro a huge problem. So the public, I'm very sensitive to the public-private uh, relationship that we've been pretty much kicked out of. And I would like to see something different happen to Fair Park. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Charles Mann. Mr. Mann.
Good morning. Good morning. I'm Charles Mann, 1818 Corsicana, Dallas, Texas, 75201. And at this point, I'd just like to ask a rhetorical question. The question being, do you really think you can get away with pushing this deal through in 2016? This is not 1955. This is not 1965. This is 2016. The public demands and expects accountability, transparency, and input into any plan that is uh, put forth to take over Fair Park. None of those things are in the Walt Human plan. Now, uh, Mayor Mike Rawlings on Monday had a press conference in which he invoked the memory of the five valiant dead uh, uh, police officers who lost their lives here in Dallas. And he took a lot of heat for that. And uh, I, I think if, if he could get away with it, I can too. So I'm going to invoke the same thing. Uh, it is my sincerest hope that you will consider all of the opposition uh, voices in this audience today to be kind of like what that guy uh, did with those police officers, okay? Just kill this bill dead. Okay? Thank you. Donnie Covington. Good morning, uh, Donnie Covington, 2415 Norwood Drive, Dallas, Texas, 75228. Um, I am the president of the board of the Margot Jones Partnership, housed at the Magnolia Lounge in Fair Park. Um, I have been with that, our, that institution in that building, uh, thanks to the generosity of the Friends of Fair Park for the past six years. I have, at times, spent literally months on end in Fair Park, day after day, producing theater. We are a, we are a theater um, that provides affordable space for small independent theater companies in the Dallas area. I'm not fundamentally opposed to this, to this deal. However, um, as a small independent nonprofit that operates in uh, what is a place that I have come to love in Dallas, I absolutely adore the openness of Fair Park, the fact that anybody can enter it at any time. I have a three-year-old. Our favorite thing to do on a Saturday is go and feed the turtles. Um, there are some big turtles in that lagoon if you have not been there. We can walk in and do that. We can drive in and park and go and do that, no cost, and be amongst beautiful architecture um, in a beautiful park in the center of our town. I also live near the Arboretum. You cannot walk into the Arboretum. You cannot walk into the, to the Dallas Zoo. These are places that you have to have access, you have to have a vehicle, you have to have the time and the resources to enter those. Those are places that were handed over. Again, I'm not fundamentally opposed to this, but I want you to look long and hard and think about us as your constituency that use these, these uh, resources. Are you doing what is in the best interest of us? We, we take wonderful advantage of that space and everybody that I know that uses it loves it. Um, I wish I could say the same for the other places that have had that happen to them in Dallas. Again, I'm not fundamentally opposed, but please, please, please make sure you are doing your due diligence to us as the citizens of this city. Thank you. Thank you. Marion Marshall. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Marion Marshall. I live and have a business in South Dallas at 1409 South, South Lamar Street here in Dallas. I've been a resident and a business owner there for about 15 years. I'm also a longtime volunteer at the South Dallas Cultural Center, so I have a deep commitment to this part of our city. As I've read numerous articles on the Mayor's Growth, Grow South initiative, I'm always struck by how the Fair Park South Dallas area seems to only have one location that is targeted for big improvements, and that is the gated community of Fair Park. 
It is bad enough that this landmark location has a history of taking precedence over its surrounding neighborhoods, but now have the mayor trying to ram a plan down our throats for Fair, Fair Park that has that has no one has 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 no any has no idea that the ultimate has no idea what the ultimate price tag will be or who will ultimately benefit from it will, is reprehensible. The city citizens deserve to have this process be completely transparent and to add to the fact that this is this proceed this proposed foundation only has two representatives from among the surrounding neighborhood makes it makes it smack of elitism. If Fair Park is indeed as important as the mayor say, says it is, why wouldn't he want to open this process up to search for the best possible management team, one that could be accountable to more than just a few board members, many of whom have no vested interest in the surrounding community? I urge the Park Board to do its due diligence this morning and not push through this agreement simply because pressure to do so is coming from the mayor. I urge the Park Board to see this turnout of concerned citizens today, on Monday, and several other meetings as a call for more transparent and accountable process for you to take the necessary time to ensure that this is best for the citizens and just not for a few people. Thank you, ma'am. Susie Bell Gossel. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Susie Bell Gosley speaking on behalf of the League of Women Voters. I have a long presentation that will not fit in two minutes. I have a written paper for you to, re to, to which you can refer and read more details. We encourage informed and active participation in government, work to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and to influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League supports maximizing the use and attractiveness of Fair Park, improvement of the management of Fair Park through centralized and entrepreneurial management methods, increased cooperation among the city, the Park Department, and various museums of, the, of Fair Park. Income generation by placing a surcharge on special events or in, and or leasing Fair Park facilities while maintaining free admission to the park. We also support some strengthened relationships between Far, Fair Park and the surrounding neighborhood in a number of ways. Protection of existing housing stock a better link between Fair Park, downtown, the Arts District, improved security in the neighborhood, employment of more area residents, and promoting events geared to the neighborhood. The League believes that when government entities consider a transfer of governmental services and assets and functions to the private sector, the community impact and goals of such transfers <coughs> must be identified and considered. Further, the League believes that transparency, accountability, and preservation of the common good must be ensured. The decision to privatize a public service should be made after an informed, transparent planning process and through analysis of the implications of privatizing service delivery. While specific criteria will vary by service in local conditions, the League believes the following considerations should apply. I will only name a few. Ongoing- Ma'am, I'm sorry, your time is okay, up. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna hand this okay, to someone uh, for each of you to get a, a copy. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask that we uh, keep moving. Uh, this is going to be a long day, and let's—I I know you we're enthusiastic, and, and there's—but uh, I would hope you wouldn't uh, do that anymore. Um,
Our next speaker is uh, Catherine Garrison. And I'm thinking about clapping for you, but I won't. Okay. <laughs> good, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your service, everyone. My name is Catherine Garrison. I live at 3308 Arnoldale. And Mr. Wells, as the chairperson of this board, I'm speaking to you. I voted for you when you ran against Tom Lippert in 2007. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you were the only candidate, perhaps in the last 30 years, to take the long view on the city of Dallas. You weren't promoting sexy, shiny bridges or hotels or convention centers. You were in favor of firming up city pensions, infrastructure, and water rights. None of those things are sexy or shiny unless you're thirsty, broke, or you can't get to work. These were long-term goals that would affect every citizen of Dallas from every economic bracket, every neighborhood, every district, and every race equitably for generations to come. Less than 10 years ago, you were about accountability and transparency. You were open-minded. I wonder what happened to that man. Eliminate the secrecy for the credibility of this board. Take the long view now. Delay the vote. Let's get all the facts on the table. There is no rush. Oh, Roland Diaz. Sorry. Good morning. Uh, my name is Rolando Diaz, and I am an abstract uh, expressionist, a Cuban American painter. I, uh, my residence is at South Lamar, 1409 South Lamar Street. And the reason I'm here is because um, I got concerned when I heard about uh, this meeting this morning. I happened to have worked for Dallas Air Rapid Transit for five years, many, many years ago. I respect Walt Human. Uh, as a leader uh, in some of the direction of uh, what happened with, uh, with our mass transit. I also was able to work with uh, Central Dallas Ministry, City Square, in the origination of that program many years ago. And then, of course, at South Side of Lamar, uh, as that whole development has grown in many, many ways, and many artists, including myself, have had a hand in growing that. The reason I'm here is because I believe that Fair Park is the people's park. Fair Park is a place where the unification of all sorts of people, whether poor, rich, it doesn't matter the race, come together in this city. And there's few places in Dallas that can accomplish that. So I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, Fair Park is, uh, is a place that uh, whatever decision is made uh, in, this, uh, in this place has to be the voice of the people, uh, complete transparency, and a unification of voices in order to arrive at the best option. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, John, is it, is it Sconin? Or somebody, somebody's going to have to help me on this one. John? Are you here? Oh, John Scoval. John, you don't write very well. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of other problems, too, uh, other than writing. So, welcome. Uh, th thank you, and my thanks to the Park Board. Dallas has a history of giving back service and we are fortunate that that continues uh, so uh, I'd like to establish my credentials first okay I ran around in a family with a guy named Mr. Cotton Bowl I thought I was you know that the Cotton Bowl was a hospital and I was born on the 50 yard line but I came to find out that that was a little different than my additional credentials my father served on the park board uh, and I, through his influence I had my first paying job okay and that job uh, was picking up trash at Fair Park. So I know every square inch of that entire area. So have lived at uh, 6322 Deloach, uh, been on that street, how about 68 years? Uh, so as a, as a Dallas resident. Uh, Walt Human, nobody in this community has more integrity okay, or credibility than Walt Human. 
Nobody. Okay? Very, very simple. He is inclusive. He is transparent. And, you know, I would encourage the park board uh, to take Fair Park, take this community, take it to the next level. We have an opportunity right now to look in our mirror, see what we have done wrong, look forward, look at the community that surrounds us, and do something special that keeps Fair Park where it should be as one of the premier destinations in Dallas, Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Gonzalez. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Park Board members. Michael Gonzalez. I reside at 7014 Casa Loma. I'm representing the Hispanic Leadership Roundtable, an organization that consists of numerous Hispanic organizations. My family, I was mentored by Bill and Adelpha Callejo, who are a long time known as profound advocates in this city. We come from a military background. Uh, when my father was 17, he was fighting in Peleliu Islands with President Kennedy. When I was 17, I was being prepared to go to war at military school in Kerrville, Texas. So we had an extensive history of contributions and giving. We've been involved in the civil rights movement. And our, and our background is a little bit different. I'm a product of segregated schools and segregated parks. Now, I cannot tell you in honesty, we have not here and seen every element that is in this plan. And I have a profound respect for Walt Human. Let me, and I, I'm reluctant to call it a Walt Human plan. I'm, I think we need to call it more of a plan and look at the systemic elements that need to be redressed. What we are, however, pro is this. We are pro-transparency, okay, number one. We are pro-business. That area does need to be obviously refabricated in a very profound way. And what we are opposed to, however, is we're opposed to a, a group, a small group deciding who our leaders are. And I've sent that email to Walt Human already asking for a meeting. And I believe he will meet, okay? And what we are opposed to is a 50s and 60s model. That's a Jurassic Park. It's horse and buggy. Yeah. It won't work anymore. It's like technology. You have to embrace it. It's a more powerful change than anyone in here. What we're opposed to is disrespect for the black and Hispanic community. This is disrespect. If this, I'm a product of North Dallas, 5642 Charleston, the most Irish states. If this were, this would not be acceptable if this community and this mayor was doing that in Preston Hollow. And that is, the, that is the fact of the matter. Finally, I will say in closing that there will always going to be powerful interest that will perpetuate and promulgate injustices. But there must never be a time, and we cannot stop those, but there must never be a time where we do not come out and protest those injustices. Thank you. Miss Moore, uh, is it Elisa Morris? Mm. Hello. Hello. Um, it's Ilethia, but thank oh, you. Ilethia Morris. Thank you. 4850 Spring Avenue, Dallas, Texas. I'm in um, Tiffany Young's, uh, right here, District 7. And um, I am, my part-time, full-time volunteer gig is organizing the cooperative movement here in Dallas, South Dallas. Um, Co-opting is a long-standing tradition um, brought on first, or I, I think, um, collectively by Mondragon uh, in Spain, the Basque region of Spain. And co-opting in the African-American community has been a way of life. And uh, we are trying to bring that very movement here. Um, the Dallas Fair Park Food Association, we're proposing just that. And relative to where we fit in the scheme of things here, is solutions and a way of the surrounding, I'm representing the surrounding communities um, since I live here. And because I have been door to door, we've held our meetings, we are looking for solutions and one of those solutions would be Fair Park as an anchoring institution. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Cleveland model, but that's kind of what we're looking at in terms of here. We formed a nonprofit and we're trying to um, work our solutions that way, beginning with a food co-op and then other business entities. Um, Jessica Gordon-Nimham, um, in her book, Collective Courage, 
Uh, she writes about the history of African Americans and the cooperative movement. The economic basis of African life was originally cooperative. Cooperatives was um, one of nature's more important schemes for survival. So um, hopefully I can get an audience with you all and we can discuss and I appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you for the time. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Annie Melton. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Annie Melton, 613 Mount Auburn, Mount Auburn Avenue, Dallas. And I'm very conflicted by what's going on because I have worked with Walt Human on the North Central Expressway Task Force many years ago, and I found him to be an inclusive and uh, an inclusive leader who listens. And we, I think we came up with a pretty good plan for North Central. And I appreciate that. However, I also am involved in the Fair Park community. And it breaks my heart to see people not comfortable and feeling excluded uh, from the process. And my key concern uh, at this point is that uh, the meetings be open and the bylaws be inclusive and transparent of the people in the community. It's high time. And I, I want to uh, say that I don't think you should vote on uh, the deal today if it's not concluded as being agreeable to the board. That um, I don't see a problem with putting a placeholder in for the money you need that makes it so urgent in the next fiscal year. We still have, you know, September and August to do it. And it's not critical that it's done today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Rick Adamson. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Rick Adamski, 302 East 5th Street, uh, in, here in Dallas. A couple of things. Um, first of all, I know this has been said, uh, but if any type of, if a $100,000 proposal were up there, there'd be an RFP, there'd be a public debate, and I don't see how $600 million should be different than $100,000. Um, I think that we sh it should be competitive, and we should be going for the best people around the, the world. A second thing is in terms of open records requests. Uh, I know that there's been some concern that someone might overwhelm the system with open records requests. Um, and there's going to be a lot of money coming in, right? Like they're, they're asking for many millions of dollars. If someone needs to be hired full time to do open records, then that should be something that's, that's possible. So I think that we need to have a lot of transparency. Um, and I'm concerned that having a lot more money and a lot less transparency doesn't make sense. Uh, a third thing I think is that a huge investment like this requires a year-round purpose. Uh, so if we're going to say there's $500 million or whatever that are going into infrastructure in the buildings, what are these buildings doing year-round that are going to be worth this, this investment? Um, so that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think that that, that has to be rethought, and for that reason, I think that the, something has to be established in terms of the way that the State Fair operates that allows year-round usage in order for this type of decision and, and this type of investment to be made. Um, a last concern that I have, I think that there's been a lot of discussion about a lot of these issues, obviously. That doesn't mean that all of the issues have been discussed. And when you have things like bylaws being, when, when you know, it's said that we can't discuss the bylaws, for example, or that the park board can't discuss it, I have a lot of concerns about that. And I hope that everything is ultimately discussed before, before a final decision is made. Thank you very much for all Thank your time. Thank you. Krista uh, De La Harp. Did I pronounce that right, ma'am? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Krista De La Harp. I am a private citizen of Dallas, a resident at 1189 Tranquilla Drive near the Arboretum. I come here today as a citizen that is very much in love with Dallas. I've lived here for over 20 years. I grew up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is one of the most iconic cities in the world because it respected its history and understood 
that that history and uniqueness was a gift and it generates millions of dollars for the whole state of New Mexico every year. Dallas has such an institution, it is Fair Park. It is the largest collection of Art Deco architecture in the country. Another interesting thing from history is Samuel Lynn, when he passed away, he bequeathed to the city of Dallas the largest park system in the entire United States. This was a tremendous gift and it's been mismanaged over the years and it has left all of you here in a difficult situation and I know you work very hard and I appreciate all that you do for the parks in the city of Dallas. However, we have to learn from our history and not repeat mistakes. This is not a deal to be shoved through and voted on today. It should be delayed, it should be discussed and thoroughly fleshed out so we get the best solution for the city. I know that DART is wonderful, but if DART had considered connecting the airports as a public transportation infrastructure from the beginning, it would have been a much better system. So it merits to discuss things and think thoroughly through when planning something as important as this is. This is very important for the future of Dallas. Since July 7th, the eyes of the world are upon us. We need to come together and work to be the best city in the country. Thank you for your time. Cynthia here. Am I saying it's M U L? It looks like M U L C A H Y. What? Uh, there she is. I'm sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't read it. My fault. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Cynthia Mulcahy. I live at 704 Haynes Avenue. I am a new board member of Friends of Oak Cliff Parks, and I'm here today to voice my opposition to the current contract uh, management contract as well as bylaws. Um, as a conceptual artist working with my collaborator, Ms. Lauren Woods, right here on the segregate, segregated parks project, I remain concerned about the deference shown certain foundations, private foundations, and issues involving our city parks. The letter revealed yesterday by Brett Shipp, uh, which can be found on the WAA website, is damning in its revelations. And I am here to voice my opposition to the attempt to limit the discussion by other park board members of the contract and the bylaws. We need to delay the vote. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. That concludes our uh, speakers of the day. We thank you for coming. Um, the, the only item, <coughs> excuse me, the only item of business that we have other than uh, that what we've been talking about is the approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Um, we're going to going to uh, um, start our, our uh, day now. Uh, since we're we've had had the opportunity to hear the citizens, um, we're going to have first a briefing by staff, and and then uh, uh, after uh, and, and and questions will uh, be allowed. Um, after that, we will uh, uh, hear from the foundation. Uh, I'm sorry, who had, you want to use your microphone, ma'am? Doing a briefing, Mr. President, can we ask a uh, staff questions? Absolutely. Okay. 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 Uh, Excuse me, before, I, before you I'm finish, sorry. my name was on the list, sir. There's one that we skipped over here. Okay. John Proctor, regional back contractors. I'm on the list. Oh, man. Uh, we'll give you one minute, sir. I thought the time is up, but let's give you one minute. You may speak. I mean, uh, I think we called your name and you weren't here. No, but I'm not anyway, I, we, we, if you would like to speak for one minute, you'll be recognized. 
My name is John Proctor. I'm the chairman of the Regional Black Contractors, okay. 2627 Mall of King Boulevard. Okay. I want, I want to, this is a great opportunity for Dallas to grow economically and business in the community. Also, I also believe that it would drive down crime because people have more employment and build up the community. I think it should be very important. You have opportunity one more time. We did this at the zoo. We didn't work at the zoo. Black contractors did not work at the zoo. You did that down there on Loop 12 when they did the uh, uh, golf opportunity down there. We didn't work down there either because we did not get in on the MBE participation. I think you should consider this a grand opportunity one more time to bring in and include black contractors involved in this management program. 35% across the board. I got, I, since you cut my time so short, I got a document I'd like to have passed out. Absolutely. And, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, are you the guy? Uh, yes. Are you going to make the presentation? Uh, yes. All right. Uh, yes, sir. John Jenkins is recognized. Yep. Uh, answer any questions today. And also we have a uh, senior assistant city attorney, uh, Connie Tanksley, Tankersley, uh, who's also here to uh, help assist with answering any questions. Uh, if it's okay with the board, what I would like to do this morning is be able to go through each page of the contract and uh, allow the board members to ask any of any questions. Okay? And if it's okay with the board, I'm gonna keep referring to the page numbers. Uh, so we're on page one. Let me take a time out a second. Uh, we, we have a timer, but we don't have the ability uh, to show when you're asking to talk. You have to raise your hand again. And I, and uh, Willis and, and uh, Jesse helped me to make sure I'm looking both ways. But uh, in any case, uh, uh, just, just for you wanted to speak. And yes, just for clarification, because we know some board members like to dominate the meeting, so that's probably why they don't have the opportunity. And if they do their homework before, can you set the rules now? How many minutes will we have once we address, you know, we ask our question, because they're not going to dominate the meeting. They should have done their homework before they got here. Uh, well, I, I think we're going to, you know, if you have a question, or uh, the staff is going to answer it. But, and if you're not satisfied, you can ask another question. But what's this the is, time this, frame, uh, Mr. President? Say again? The time. Well. Because some of our board members, you know, they want to. Well, this isn't. This isn't. Five or ten minutes. And we're not going to spend all day because we all have something we want to say. I'm uh, sorry. I don't mean to be out no, of no, order. No, no, no. But, but uh, this part of it, um, any questions we have, uh, we'll, we'll, a we'll ask the, or we'll be allowed and. and and recognized, and uh, if if that isn't enough, uh, if that isn't enough to satisfy whoever asked the question, they can they can ask another question, and, uh, because we want everybody to be satisfied. If it goes on too long, uh, I think we'll we'll know if anybody's abusing us, and and I'll try to take uh, correct. And my last question, because you know I'm very transparent, since we have the media, I think everything will come out in the open. Because I don't like to be displayed as not being transparent since I, the, I call them the Division Four, want to have private meetings so you all would hear the truth and know how much we have been fighting for the community. So the reason why I'm getting the rules out in the open, because they knew the rules before the last meeting, then they lied. We don't have control over the bylaws. So and it, we will not be discussing a state fair contract, correct? Mr. President? That's my understanding. Okay, thank you. Because if half of our colleagues at Vision 4 had not imposed the, Mr. President to discuss the state for our contract, we would have been further along. Remember the briefing we had May the 27th? Mr. Rollins, you insisted that we discuss the Fair oh. Pack contract, and I wasn't on the board in 20. 
13. I came on 2014. So while y'all are telling the media we have not been transparent, y'all don't do your homework. If you come prepared, do your homework. We could have had this process done. I didn't sign up to be a part of the reality park board. And I'm sorry, but I take it very offensive when I read an article and my colleagues, they go and they want to cahoots with Mr. Williams. I respect Mr. Williams. If he's done so much for the South Dallas community, why haven't he came forward now? Why? And because the Ford, I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I get upset when I see my name, not my name, park board members are being coerced. I think for myself, I vote the way I want to vote. Unlike some of these other four, they council member tell them which way to vote. Uh, I'm an independent thinker. Ma'am, thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, I'm not sure quite where we were. Uh, 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 yes, uh, oh, we have one more speaker, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. Um, Mr. President, as, as we go through this document, if we get to a section where we would like to make an amendment, should we read that whole amendment into the contract? Because even if it includes some well, language well, that's we, there we and some language we'd like to add. Yeah, the actual, um, uh, there's going to be plenty of time to add amendments without reservation, but that will come in a later section. This is a question and answer for, for things that you have think have not yet been answered satisfactorily uh, by the staff. And, and that's the purpose of this section. So we're not going to vote on this document No, today. we're not going to vote right now, and we're not going to, uh, we're, we're going to, and then we're going to give uh, the, the uh, foundation a chance to do the same with, with us. And then from there, we will then start to, to see if we can put something together or not. Uh, but hopefully to finish today. Oh, uh, it's certainly my plan. Okay, so this first go round, you don't want our amendments to this. I don't want well, there aren't any amendment to make. It, we we need to get the main, the main issue on the table if we're going to make amendments. That comes first. Okay, Max, right. can I just, Max? Yes, I'm just so, to pick up on Amy because I think this is helpful. What you're doing, do we want to understand this? So, you're saying that you don't want to entertain any amendments. This is purely going to be them asking questions. Yes, this is just, that's my understanding of what the, the staff would like to do. Uh, John, would you like to, or, or uh, Willis, like to respond to that? Uh, I, I can, or Willis. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, this part of the uh, meeting, we would like to have the opportunity to respond to, uh, to, you know, to each board member's questions regarding the contract. We'll just go back, go through each page, and we'll just ask you, do you have any questions? or you need clarity on any section of the contract. And then after we can complete that part of it, we will move on to uh, uh, allow uh, the foundation the opportunity to come in and pre present to the board. Uh, they will have an opportunity to uh, share with you uh, uh, any of their concerns or vision and allow you the opportunity to ask them questions. And then the uh, last part of the meeting is the item for individual consideration. And uh, as, as Mr. Wells mentioned, uh, at that time you will have an opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to vote on the item, to submit your amendments, or, or, or continue discussion as you uh, make your amendments. Okay, so our amendment could be section 2.03. I'd like to see it read like this. Uh, yes. Okay. John, I think that we run some risk, and we'll certainly defer to what staff and legal counsel say is, is the appropriate process. We run some risk that folks across this table have discussed informally or in some cases already prepared amendments. So you're asking us to give you questions but not err into saying how we prefer it. So that's going to create a little bit of a, a challenge for process because one approach, I'm not suggesting this, is that I think we'll stay where we are. Can, if, if, can I, can I, if you, if you wouldn't mind, Mr. President, could I ask uh, uh, Tammy Palomino uh, with the uh, city attorney's office to provide some clarification on the process? Well, I think that, uh, no. uh, do you correctly outlined the way that the meeting will go today? It's just an efficient way of running the meeting so that we can get through so I'll read through it again. Briefing by staff, and the, um, the board members will then ask questions of staff, and the foundation will do their presentation, and the board would ask questions of the foundation, and then we would move on to the item itself, and then motion. We would make motion. Um, that time would be available. And then once you get the motion on the floor, whatever it is, 
That's the time. We understand. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Sean? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you also to all of the members of the community that uh, came out and voiced your concerns. We've heard a lot of concerns both ways. If I may, I just want to kind of, if I could just from my own personal standpoint, kind of lay the groundwork on what I thought our role was as um, park board representatives. And I think we have gotten uh, emotionally hijacked by who and what. And I think we're really forgetting the real reason, which is the why. Why are we here? Why are we even talking about a management agreement for Fur Park? Because clearly we don't have the resources internally to make the necessary corrections to Fur Park. So I would ask that, that uh, my colleagues remember our vote, May 10th, 2015, where we unanimously gave recommendations to the mayor's task force uh, recommendations. And we called out a few items. We called out that we don't have purview over the surrounding areas, because that's not our area of purview as far as development in the surrounding community. That's what this board unanimously said. We also stated that we wanted rep representation from the community. That has been done. So I just ask that we, re we, have, we remain with integrity, respect the process, hear everybody out, but at the same time, let's really focus on why versus the who's and the what's. We have an issue, regardless of what happens today at the end of the day, we have a jewel in Fair Park, and something needs to be done. The resources we have now are not enough to move forward. We have a parks director that we think highly of, we respect his opinion. Our mayor appointed Mr. Human to oversee this initiative, and I think we ought to follow suit on what his, the groundwork has already been laid. Of course, voice your opinion, but I just ask that we keep it respectful um, because there has been a lot in social media, a lot of allegations that um, I won't go down and touch because eagles don't fight snakes on the ground. So I will remain in there. But I will say that we need to just have this thing decent and in order, respect everybody's opinion, keep your personal antics out of it, and just stick to the why and make a decision that will move this community forward. Thank you. Let's go back to the main issue. Uh, John, if you would uh, okay. start your presentation. All right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would just go to each page and, and ask if the board has any questions. Uh, we're on page one. Uh, are there any questions from the board? Okay, I will move on to page two, purpose and terms. Are there any questions from the board? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, John, uh, yes. I appreciate you. I appreciate the staff for all the work that they put in. Um, I would first like to ask, you know, again, as you move forward, uh, if you could give the board an opportunity to identify what questions and allow the chairman to uh, first acknowledge that there is a question. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm now on page two, article one, purpose and term. Are there any questions? I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, are there any questions from the board? I defer to the chair. You're recognized. Um, I have a big problem with the length of the contract. Uh, when would that be addressed? Instead of one 20-year contract, uh, I'm wondering if we couldn't have two 10-year contracts with two possible five-year renewals instead of one 10-year contract, I mean, one 20-year contract, the city has, in my opinion, gotten itself in a lot of trouble with these very, very long contracts because situations change. And if you have a contract in place, uh, you really can't address uh, the changes. Okay. Uh, of, of, go Uh, uh, if the question is why staff is recommending a 20, 20 year plus two five year renewals, uh, just from our experience, when someone is going in and they're going to be making major improvements, it, it doesn't matter who, we, we tend to offer long term contracts to allow them the opportunity to make those long term agreement, I mean improvements. And uh, the second reason is, uh, you know, they have to they have to secure donations of uh, financing so we also want to give them enough time to re to be able to pay back their financing and third as you know uh, 
folks just don't donate per se to the city of Dallas, but when it's a nonprofit, they are more willing to donate. And one reason to help far as with their donors to make sure that who they're donating to is going to be around. So those are the three reasons why, if you look at any of our contracts, those are the three components when we really consider a long-term contract. All right, uh, Marlon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I'd like to go back to page one because I did have a question and I didn't get a chance to, I guess you were up, Mr. Chair. I didn't I'm get sorry. a chance to get addressed for my question on page one. Um, John, um, if you can explain to me or give me a specific, um, what type of nonprofit is the Texas Foundation? Uh, the Fair Park, Texas, excuse me, the Fair Park, Texas Foundation. Because from my understanding, there's a multiple Mm -hmm. Not for profit uh, organizations or authorization, I mean, uh, structures out there. Can you clarify what type of 501c3 this foundation is? Uh, and I'm probably going to defer to the attorneys as well, but they meet the criteria as it relates to being a nonprofit that meets our definition as far as being able to operate and manage Fair Park as a nonprofit. And, I'm, and Connie, do you want to add? Oops. I mean, so. It's organized to uh, promote the purposes of Fair Park. And so they've organized themselves uh, as a 501c3, a nonprofit organization. So they are in compliance. They've turned over their certificate of formation and their bylaws to the city of Dallas. So they are strictly for the purpose. They're not going, their, their operating purpose is not for anything other than for, for this agreement, for uh, fulfilling the purposes of this agreement. Um, if the result is that they were enter into the contract with the city of Dallas. Jesse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, staff, um, you mentioned uh, self-financing. Has it been brought to your attention that the organization intends to get um, financing on their own? This working? Okay, it's back on again. Okay, it hasn't been brought to our attention how they plan on far as securing their finances or if they plan on raising, I mean, uh, plan on going to a bank for finances. I would just answer the question as far as the, what uh, typical in our contracts when we get long-term contracts, uh, one has to do with finance and two has to do with uh, being able to secure, uh, get donors and, and, and improvements. So in a typical contract when a uh, private entity or a someone who's partnering up with the city of Dallas, and they lay out their plan on how to construct buildings or improvements, typically they show where that financing's coming from, and that's why we typically give them long-term contracts? No, not necessary. Not in the very beginning do they outright uh, lay out their plan for as finances, but they do share that they do plan on when they say, hey, we plan on making 50 million worth of improvements, we plan on making 100 million dollars worth of improvements. Uh, once again, our experience is that these nonprofits, they go out and secure different forms of financing, either short term, long term, grants, uh, sponsorships. Uh, so yes, that's why we consider long term contracts. Thank you. I think that um, I think a lot of people have a problem with the, the term of this contract, um, particularly because as the contract exists now, there aren't a lot of protections for the city. Um, I think people might feel more comfortable with a longer term if those protections were put <coughs> to the contract. Uh, if it's a question of Mr. Sams, I, I know uh, as we go through the uh, contract, you'll see uh, because of the work of the board, uh, I think you all have done a, 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 an excellent job of making sure that regardless in this particular contract that folks will be held accountable for the obligations. In other words, for the deliverables. Thank you, Mr. President. John, in page one of the contract, um, the section whereas, 
um, the wording not limited to. Can you explain uh, what facilities, aside from the ones um, like Cotton Bowl, the, um, the music hall, all the different museums, um, what other facilities will be included? And can you give me an example? Now, I'm going to defer to the attorney, but before Connie speaks, she's speaking too. Could you, uh, where it says not limited to, would you just give examples of the different venues? So basically all that was outlined, and here's a couple examples of the venues out at Fair Park and buildings and facilities. Uh, however, uh, there are several uh, buildings and facilities out at Fair Park, so we just didn't want to list every last one of them. The Science Museum and, and the other, um, what is it called? Yeah, Texas the, the, Discovery uh -huh. Garden. They're going to be included. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Yolanda? I, I just want clarification. Everything that's highlighted in red, are those the changes that we requested? Uh, go ahead. Yeah. So what you received was a, a compare right that the city attorney's office prepared based on um, the last version that you received, which was prepared on June 28th. Ma'am, could you pull your mic up just okay, a little sorry. bit? Okay, um, sorry. So the city attorney's office prepared a compare right version, which is the red line that you're seeing, and it is a compilation of um, the straw votes that were taken, so the drafting that, for the straw votes, and any, any additional um, edits that were necessary based on staff clarifications. So the city attorney's office had to make additional changes to the document based on additional information from uh, staff, uh, received from staff reflective of current operations that would impact, be impacted if this contract went forward. So those are, those are the red line changes that you see. And then on page one, I also just need clarification, which I know this. Do, do we have the right to tell any of our partners or 5013C dictate how their bylaws should be constructed? What is our role as the board? Which I know, but I just want it on record, please. Well, there can be a collaboration for sure. I mean, there, there's no legal prohibition on someone that is contracting with the city to have input from the city as to how they are going to um, run or um, organize themselves. So uh, there's, there's no legal prohibition. So if the city was interested in having some input as to the comp composition of a board uh, with an entity that they were going to con contract with, sure. I mean, that's, that's perfectly legal. Okay. John? If you could, thank you. If you could expand some on that um, and elaborate on what precedent has been set thus far with management contracts within the city and within the, within the parks, uh, parks Department in regards to bylaws and nominating members. If you can elaborate on what precedent has been set. I'd have to look into that. I, I don't, I'd have to go back and look and see if we had any input right off the top of my head. I can't, I can't give you that information, but I, I'd be happy to circle back with the board and, and see if we have given any input on, on any other organizations that, that entered into any contracts with the city where we actually had uh, input as to the composition of their board. My, my response was more of there's no legal prohibition that would keep us from uh, collaborating with them. And uh, whether or not they accepted that is up to them. Becky. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a quick question on page one. The addition of the agreement falls under a bidding exemption. Could you explain that to me and why that was added? Um, yes. Um, when there are contracts, um, there is a procurement process. Um, the state, the, as a governmental body, uh, the, the city is required to do competitive or is subject to competitive bidding. But there are except exemptions to the competitive bidding rules, and this particular contract falls under an exemption. So this allows the, the city of Dallas to procure this type of contract. Um, because it falls under this specific exemption. So we, we aren't violating state law by entering into this contract and not putting it out into the market and doing an RFP, for example, um, so, or doing any kind of posting that we want someone uh, to contract with the city of Dallas. We are in compliance fully with state law. And but this, that's not the norm usually. There is a bidding process by and large for most contracts with the city. I can't speak for this particular type. It is very standard. Uh, I, I mean, I don't, 
I can't speak for whether or not the city would elect. The exemptions are there for the use of the municipalities, for the governmental body. Uh, it's up to the governmental body to decide whether or not it wants to utilize and avail itself of an exemption. Okay, I'm not in favor of this addition. The addition was necessary uh, for the clarification on the contract itself in the manner of this is, this is why this contract exists. Yeah. Larry? Oh, Larry, we're here. Hi, Larry. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, just to clarify the ground rules. As we go through the, uh, I, I assume, great detail, detail the, the issues in this draft, uh, at the end of the day, if, if the board votes to move this on to city council, uh, it's my understanding that the city council uh, will make its own decisions about this contract, and they're not bound by whatever we do today. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. Marlon and then Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, President, I'm sorry. Uh, in section 1.01, .01, I have a question regarding the foundation agrees that the park, Fair Park only will only be used for the permitted use as defined in section 4.05. Mm -hmm. Is that just uh, operations or is that also is land use, um, is land use being considered or um, looked at in that as well? Okay, I'm going to go to section 4.05, which, and I'm going to refer to page numbers for the rest of the board. Page 17. And, and, and it says Fair Park will be used solely for the park purposes, including as the location of recreational facilities, activities, cultural institutions and programs, sporting events, entertainment, other support facilities and activities, concessions and parking, as well as marketing, promotion and, and development. Uh, that, that pretty much defines the use for the permitted use. Uh, just, again, John, just for clarification, permitted use for land has to do directly with zoning. So I'm trying to see if that uh, entails the current zoning or has the right to change the zoning for the purpose of use. Um, the, the actual reason why we had to do it this way is because parkland can only be used for park purposes uh, under state law unless you do, uh, you follow certain procedures to actually uh, do uh, chapter 26, for example, uh, to change the use from park purposes. And so, um, our understanding is that Fair Park wanted to be maintained as fair, for park purposes. Um, we didn't receive any direction uh, from the board that this contract would be subject to any other purposes, that Fair Park would be used for any other purposes. So if at any time the foundation wanted to utilize any portions of Fair Park for any purposes, it would have to go through the state mandated process of uh, that's applicable now for redesignating park purpose, park land for other purposes. So. And, and you're confirming that to Texas Chapter 22, if I'm not correct. Uh, I believe so. I'm not. I'm not your usual 26. park attorney, so I apologize. I don't chapter know all this. It's Chapter 26. 26. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I wanted to go back to competitive bidding. This foundation, if they're using bond funds, will they're uh, any activities that they use those for, will that have to be competitively bid? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Will bond fund expenditures by this foundation have to be competitively bid? Any bond expenditures, because they're public, their city public monies would have to be follow the procurement processes of the city. Yes. Thank you. Point of order, Mr. President. Uh, I thought the groundwork was laid that we was going to go through page by page. So if we could respectfully keep going page by page and not jumping throughout the document just for time's sake. That's our goal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Paul, did you want anything else? Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, I was on page uh, two. I'm I, have one one I have a question for the staff. It has to do with the goals on uh, section 1.01B. And um, I want to know what the distinction is between the goals as they're described here, mm -hmm. and then the performance in objectives that are stated in section um, 
four point B on page 16. Okay. It was my thought as we discussed these provisions previously that the goals and the performance objectives would be the same. They'd be synonymous. Yeah. Once we determined what the goals were to be accomplished under the contract, those would become performance standards. And then uh, we would look to metrics that could be approved to measure the ability to measure how close the foundation was coming to realizing those goals. As you would judge the conduct of any manager, you'd have performance standards. And I, I'm, I'm a little confused that there appears to be a distinction between what the goals are and what the performance objectives are. I should think yeah. the uh, performance yeah. objective should be realization of the goals. Yeah, uh, Mr. Hodgeberg, uh, we include this section based on the direction from the board from the June 16th meeting, uh, but but today is a good good opportunity to for any type of to clear up anything, any type of clarification. Okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, proceed. Uh, okay, I'll uh, go ahead and Jenkins. proceed to page three, which is basic ownership transfer and transition. Paul. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Tankersley, I believe that you and I had a conversation um, earlier this week in which uh, we spoke about there being a conflict between the, um, the two different intellectual property provisions and that um, that, would be, that was going to be taken care of administratively or, or legally without amendment. But I see that the, it, it's, it's still in here. Is, what was the disposition of that? So that was worked out with the uh, foundation's attorney, and we will be correcting that. The city attorney's office will be correcting that. And, and so, they are in accord that there is a conflict. And okay. so uh, that intellectual property from this particular provision. I'm sorry, ma'am. Would you pull your mic I'm up? I'm sorry. Get, will it come closer to okay, you? Okay, so I'll pull it closer. Lower. So um, yeah. there. Sorry, I'm short. Um, but it, the, the result of our conversation with the attorneys will be that, that provision, this will be deleted from this provision and we will handle it just in the intellectual property provision. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, Mr. Jenkins. Okay. Right, we'll move on to page four. Yes. Um, I have several issues under um, E. Would you like to have those now that are a way of um, helping protecting the artwork and the cultural affairs having say so over certain things? Or do we do that at the very end? Well, I mean, if it's more of a question or clarification, uh, we'll, we'll be happy to ask, I mean, to, to answer or clarify anything. If it's a, a change to the contract. We I can... think it'll be a change to the okay. contract. All right. Thank you. All right. Proceed, sir. All right, page five, which is basically 2.04, Fair Park Intellectual Property. We'll move on to page six, sections 2.05, Fair Park Contracts. Excuse me, Mr. President. John, uh, oh. uh, please, okay. John, please slow down so you can give people a chance to at least be acknowledged. <laughs> I think you're reading through this and not even getting people three minutes to even be addressed or identified by the president. Please slow down. Yeah, and, and uh, just for correction, I mean, just to uh, clarify, uh, I w whatever the will of the board, I, I, I will slow down and give you all a couple of seconds to look at the page. Right. Yolanda. I'm speaking for myself. Uh, I don't speak for anyone else. Uh, I think, first of all, staff, thank y'all and Mr. Human. I failed to say that in the beginning. Y'all are doing an excellent job. I think we, can you answer how long have we had this contract for me? Uh, for a minimum of about uh, four to five weeks. Okay. Well. But we've been working on the deal points. Since, here's since, my notes. Uh, April. Since April, the deal points, which is basically what we added to the contract. Okay. Well, I'm speaking for me. We have a lot ahead of us, and we have a lot of people in the audience who want to know what it's going to be like at the end of the day. So, colleagues, if you would do your homework at home and quit having your private meetings at one of our other colleagues, then you wouldn't have to try to direct staff to slow down. We have an audience. We have an overflow. They want to know what is going to be at the end of the day. 
come prepared and do your homework and quit playing around and having your private meetings. It's thank, insulting to tell you, the staff. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but to sit up here and act like they're the only one on the board, it's 15. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jenkins, proceed, please. Okay, I'm on page six. Uh, Fair Park contracts. Okay. Yes, sir. Proceed. Okay. All right. I'm now on page seven. Paul. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as the as the draft is currently as this contract is currently drafted, there is no oversight by the director or the Office of Cultural Affairs on the disposition of the funds that are given to them uh, for resident institutions. Is that correct? Uh, you're correct. And, and we did have an opportunity to meet with Coach Affairs this morning. And, I mean, not this morning, but uh, yesterday. And, and I do believe that that item will be addressed through the uh, amendment process. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to add that if for, for some reason the management fee ends up being indexed to an inflation by this board, that the, uh, that the payments that go to the resident institutions be increased by a commensurate amount, uh, by a commensurate percentage. Thank you. All right. uh, Jesse. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, insurance obligations. Um, will the foundation be insuring the assets at Fair Park, including vehicles, buildings, uh, li uh, liability? Uh, our risk management office reviews the contract and they determine uh, their insurance requirements and we did and I'm going to defer to Willis because we do have their uh, requirements. Yes, we uh, in your three, three ring binders uh, uh, should be exhibit 503 has the five page list of insurance requirements that was updated from the office of risk management. So the city of Dallas will uh, be responsible to place insurance on the buildings, not the foundation. Uh, Connie. Yes. So under the current contract, as it's written, the, the city of Dallas will continue to insure the buildings, yes. Yes. Uh, well, but um, the personal property, um, some of the personal property, I believe the risk management uh, is addressing, um, but the property, but the actual buildings and, of course, um, anything that is owned by the city of Dallas uh, will be uh, under our coverage. And that decision was made by risk management? That is typical in our institutional uh, management contracts. Uh, when we did a comparison of the, uh, the other management contracts, like the Arboretum and the Zoo, uh, that was the standard position that the city took with those. And so we uh, were in line with that. And, and Mr. Moreno, to add, uh, because uh, the foundation is just managing the facilities and the park on our behalf. Uh, the assets still remain, still belong to the city. Uh, athletic events. Um, just some clarification on uh, which uh, athletic events we're referring to and um, how the management fee uh, would be impacted if the management fee was not uh, provided. Yeah, I'm going to defer to Daniel Ward to the, the current uh, games. There are currently game stipends for Texas OU, Grambling Prairie View, and the uh, the uh, the bowl game in December. So, uh, and if those funds are not provided, uh, it would be the foundation would have to make a decision in terms of whether they could pr fund those stipends each year. But the reduction would probably happen during the budget process. So. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as, the, as the management fee is current, currently structured, we, we pay the foundation for these events and then they pass that through. Is, is that correct? That is correct. There will be a, a management fee paid to the foundation and the foundation uh, will be responsible for allocation of those game stipends to the, once the games are played. So they're basically assuming our, the operations that the city has currently, those monies are put into our budget and then we make the game payments uh, to the teams. And as the uh, contract is currently drafted, it says that if we receive a penny less, then their obligations go away, and it does not reduce their uh, management fee by a commensurate amount. Is that correct? 
uh, Connie? Currently, that is correct. Um, it doesn't uh, account for any reduction, um, and so that is not something that was provided in the contract, um, and so that would have to be corrected by an amendment. And uh, do you believe that this is a deficiency in the contract? Um, I, that is something that is um, that if, if staff uh, would, you know, acknowledge that that was the way that it was supposed to be handled, yes, it is an oversight, and we would have to correct it. Um, and Ms. Mr. Jenkins, does, would staff support an amendment to correct that? Um, I, I think I think the uh, the gain stipends are in there uh, for economic development purposes and stuff. I think uh, an amendment or proper uh, suggestion might be that if at any point one of the games goes away or we lose a game, that the foundation has a certain amount of time to replace the game uh, or else maybe we, we could insert language that it would be reduced by that amount um, if the board would like. Okay. Um, Ms. Tankersley, I don't believe that the language in this amendment on 10 reflects giving the, f the foundation time to find other, f uh, the city to find other funds for that. Well, I'm, I'm not referring to your amendment, but if you would, if at any time you would want to clarify um, the understanding of what was supposed to happen to the management fee to cover uh, these athletic events, we would have to have some amendment um, by you at, at the amendment process. But, but then if you wanted to add on to your amendment um, that you wanted to give them an opportunity to cure uh, so that they wouldn't lose or suffer a reduction in their management fee because of the failure of the stipend, uh, then yes, you, you would have to add to your current written proposal. And what is an appropriate uh, time frame, would you say, for an opportunity to cure? That's not really a decision the city attorney's office would make. I mean, it's, up, it's, a, it's at the election of the, of, of the board or the director. I mean, um, anywhere from... You know, I mean, we see, we draft contracts with six months, uh, 12 months. I mean, it's really more of the industry, and I'm not an athletic coordinator, so, I mean, I'd, I'll defer to staff on that. Yeah, and and, and I'm, I will ask Daniel, based on his experience of operating and managing Fair Park, when they, because we have lost games over the years, it, it takes a while to secure another game. It does. It's a, it's a lengthy process, and they're hard to, hard to pair up and get the teams to agree. Uh, I would say the minimum uh, would be a year. Eight, 18 months? Would that be acceptable 18 as well? months would be great. Um, Thank I you, Mr. Have, President. I have two, two more speakers and a third one asking, but at, at 30 after, we're going to take a five-minute break. And uh, Yolanda, have, have I already recognized you? Athletic events. It's the foundation. If it's approved, we, or they're going to work hard to keep what we care and have. I know Mr. Walter probably answer that when he get here. But you know the State Fair Classic and the Texas OU. What is their contract? I, I think we've already just renewed it. How much do they have left on their contract? The Texas OU contract currently goes through 2025. Uh, okay. Grambling Prairie View's contract is with the State Fair of Texas. And then the Heart of Dallas uh, Bowl is through 2018. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Becky? Thank you. I'm I just, sorry. I had my mic off. I oh, me too. That. I had to turn it on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I wanted to go back real quick to the... Um, foundation funding of resident institutions. So I had a question about that also, and I spoke with Willis yesterday, and he clarified for me that it is now included on page 14. So those provisions are in the document now for programming, because you all know I have that education background, and I was wanting to make sure that programming funding still will be in the contract. So just an FYI for you. And I also wanted to say, while I had the mic. Congratulations to the Parks Department out at Fair Park for their national award for events planning. Let me follow up on that. Thank you very much, Ms. Rader. Uh, last week, our uh, Fair Park staff uh, was uh, went to the uh, International Association of Venue Managers uh, National Convention, and Fair Park was selected 
uh, for the Venue Excellence Award from IAVM. That's the highest award given. So, Daniel, I just want to recognize you and your staff for all the incredible work that you do throughout the year. Thank we appreciate it. Thank you for that. But the credit also goes to all of our partners at Fair Park that work so diligently to bring uh, people out there and do programs as well. So, uh, Sean. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. My question was satisfied. I wanted to go on the record about the term of the contract and that all those existing contracts are transferable and have to be honored through the term of those contracts. So my, my question was satisfied. You're nodding. Did you say yes? No, we're in agreement. Yes. No. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> um, this uh, staff, if it's not at the appropriate time, please uh, let me know, and I'll address my question at a later time. Uh, the obligation to resident institutions. Currently, um, right, and I'm going to be uh, just throw out two, two of the foundations out there, is the uh, Texas Discovery Garden and the African American Museum. Once those contracts are expired with the city, they will have to renegotiate with the foundation, and will there be leverage for those foundations to have adequate uh, the stipends that the city is currently providing to them? Uh, you're correct. Once the uh, contract terms expire, yes, uh, the foundation will have an opportunity to renegotiate the contract. Uh, and if their the agrees aren't met, the contracts or the t contracts won't be renewed and they could be possibly removed from Fair Park? It would be the same thing we would go through with any. Yes, you, your dance is yes, it'll be the same process. We will follow any of, any of our uh, contracts that expire. Yolanda. Uh, and by the way, we'll take a break after this. For, can can for, you, for, for, for those who don't know, can you please tell us uh, who, who, where does the Texas Discovery and the African American Museum, who do they fall up under? Do they fall under the park board or how are they being funded as that cultural uh, affairs? Okay, Texas Discovery Garden falls up under the Parks Department responsibility. And you mentioned the African American Museum uh, that falls up under the responsibility of cultural, uh, cultural affairs. So whose responsibility to see to it that in the event that the African American Museum don't have funding, which I don't think Mr. Walt if he's chosen to lead this effort, he's going to kick them out. I think he know how dear the African American Museum and Texas Discovery is since we have authority over the funding to help Texas Discovery. Who ultimate responsibility, uh, you said, is for cultural affairs for the African American Museum, correct? Yeah. Uh, One of the things that uh, uh, we're going to, uh, once again, I think our amendment is going to be made later uh, that addresses whose responsibility is to work with the foundation, because right now in the contract it, it, uh, it states the director of the park department. I think there's an amendment that would be proposed to make sure that yeah. the Office yeah. of Culture Affairs okay. will be involved in that process. Okay. Yeah. I believe Amy has some, eventually when we get to the point, some, uh, has, uh, she is our representative, uh, meets with them and has been working with them and has okay. some suggestions. Okay. We'll now take a five minute break. This is William, hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like, follow, or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it, even when you call. <laughs>